I know what it looks like guys, but it's not a good review. It's the Burger one and I'm back with another video. I'm doing my first ever best of uh, video. Uh, being that last year, 2019, was my first ever year on YouTube. Uh, well, not my first year on YouTube. Um, I've been on YouTube before in various bands and stuff. But that's another story for another day. Um, I just want to sit back and crack open a beer. Uh, I'm going to advise you do the same because I have no idea how long this is going to be. Uh, I am just going to do best of beers in this video and then we'll do. I'm going to do a best of breweries in another video. I'm hoping I can hit it all in one night. We'll just see how it goes, how I feel and whatnot. Um, spoiler alert, I did not have, <laughs> wow it's a volatile beer. Uh, I did not have this beer in 2019. Uh, so that's why I chose to crack it open for this video. I didn't want to spoil anything. Uh, this video is fueled by XCO One Shoe Porter. Uh, it's their brown porter. If you can get XCO, it's my hometown brewery. Um, they have a special place in my heart. Um, and and yeah, it's a really good beer. Uh, it's one of my favorites that they make. And um, I'm kind of already spoiling a future review, but I plan on reviewing this beer in 2020. Um, while this beer decides to do what it's going to do, uh, I thought it would be cute to pay homage to a now dead blog that my friend over at Juices Brewing Q, you can find him on YouTube, um, I will be putting the link to his uh, channel in any uh, video that I shout him out in or in that Birmingham County Step video we did a dual review in. Um, so yeah, you can find that description sometime in the future. I will get to it. Um, but we did a blog called The Big Brew Blogs Blogski about three years ago, three, four years ago. And we got a little burnout, about two, three posts in. We just, we, we didn't get around to it anymore. Uh, I tried to write one final post um, to kind of get myself back into it. Maybe I could carry the blog, but I'm just, I'm not that into it. Uh, I think YouTube's easier for both of us. I think he's kind of gone into more of a competition barbecue route, which is fine. I love barbecue. He's the reason I hate chain restaurant barbecue now. And if I like the chain restaurant barbecue I'm eating, um, I'm definitely critiquing it. Uh, so yeah, and then, you know, I've just gone, you know, YouTube is just easier for me to do all these beers instead of write them up. And, and then nobody likes to read anymore these days. Anyways, I hate that. Reading is good. You should read, but that's just a fact of life. So yeah, um, I'm bringing up the old blog because I do want to rattle off my 2017 best of. So it'll just be nice to reflect, you know, while we're reflecting on the past year, it, it, it's fun for me to kind of reflect and go back on, you know, even further uh, from where my beer journey used to be. Um, and so my 2017 um, list now, tonight will be an official like top five with honorable mentions. What I'm rattling off here is just an old format I used. Uh, none of these beers are ranked. I gave out three awards um, for these. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a different format here. I'm just rattling off, you know, from three years ago. So, in 2017, I liked Einstock, the Olgerd Icelandic Porter. That must have been my favorite porter. Um, Mill Creek Brewing Company's Landmark. Um, Samuel Adams, 20 pounds of pumpkin. Spotten Optimator. Uh, Samuel Adams Oktoberfest. Um, Maggie's Peach Farmhouse Ale. Fairhope Brewing Company's uh, Bob's Blackberry Brew, uh, Samuel Adams Hefeweizen, uh, Trim Tab Brewing Company Raspberry Berliner Weiss. Uh, I gave that the best micro brew uh, beer and then the best Alabama beer award. Uh, Samuel Adams Winter Lager was on here, Hoff Brow Dunkel. Uh, Samuel Adams Summer Ale. I'm sorry, I, I drank a lot of Samuel Adams back in the day. And I hope you can tell on this channel, I've, I've really tried to uh, 
expand my tastes and my horizons and uh, not be so hardcore for uh, Samuel Adams. But uh, Samuel Adams Summer Ale is on here. I gave that best American beer of 2017. Uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon Company. Uh, the Pabst Blue Ribbon, I gave it worst beer of 2017. And then the Einstock Oldard, Oldard Icelandic White Ale. I gave that best beer of 2017. Uh, I gave it best in pour award and drink of the gods award. So yeah, I'm not, I don't do those awards anymore. That was just a separate thing for a separate time. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to share that and, um, you know, see, see where my palate has come and gone. Um, if you don't mind, if you'd like to stick around for the video, I'd also like to do my uh, top 10 all-time list uh, from this blog as well and uh, I'm really just doing that good stuff love that beer um, I'm really just uh, rattling this off just to see uh, how far along my palate has come now keep in mind this um, This post is, was written in July 10th, 2016. So at number 10, I had a beta strawberry wheat, which I still, I need to revisit that beer from this channel. That was a fantastic beer. Uh, straight to ale, he ain't heavy straight to ale. a local brewery here, I'm about 30 minutes northeast of me. I reviewed their Juicy Bunny on the channel. Uh, Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Uh, straight Tail, Brother Joseph's, another Straight Tail beer. Uh, Samuel Adams' New World. I'd love to try that Barrel Age series again from Samuel Adams uh, for the channel. Um, and uh, and, re and review, though, because they do a creep, they do that New World, and then they do like two more. And I only found the New World in, in uh, Walmart, of all places. And so... I'm going to talk to my beer store and see if they can get some stuff in. They only carry the cherry wheat for some reason, and then the they carry the four seasonals. They don't even carry Boston Lager. So, and, I, and getting to know the owners, uh, they really pay attention to what they're selling the most of, and they're you know they're constantly flipping stuff. And, and but but they do try to bring in uh, newer stuff as well uh, for us to try. Uh, and then here's my top five, I believe. No, this is not my top five. Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Where's my top five at? Okay, here we go. Here's the top five. Uh, you see, let me just click on here. Okay, so here's the top five uh, from 2016. Again, uh, we're talking three years later, and I had an incredible journey, especially in 2019. Uh, I really branched out, and uh, I'm sorry if you're annoyed. I'm just I'm just having fun with this video. Uh, it's my channel, so I'm sorry if you hate it. You can you can turn it off and dislike it. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to revisit um, where my palate has come over the last three years. Uh, Yazoo Gers is was my fifth favorite beer of all time. Uh, Yazoo is a lovely brewery in Nashville. I still love their beer. I uh, haven't had it in quite a long time. I, I plan to take a trip um, sometime this year. Uh, which brings me to a question I want to ask at the end of this video. But they're in Nashville. And the Gerst is their Amber Ale. The marketing on it is kind of like a better version of Budweiser, um, and I and I liked it. I like the marketing. It's very um, uh, patriotic, classic, traditional American lager style. Even though it's an amber ale, it just has that traditional American like lager style marketing. I really like that. Uh, then there was the New Belgium Blackberry Wine Ale. I'm not even sure New Belgium makes that beer anymore. They still do the Lips of Faith series, I believe. Um, and I've never had a, another one of their Lips of Faith series beers. 
uh, but that Blackberry Wine Ale was fantastic. I bought it two or three times. It came in a little bomber. Uh, the last time I had it was when the Pittsburgh Penguins, my favorite hockey team, won the Stanley Cup. So that was that was crazy. In fact, I was drinking it the night they won their second cup, if I remember correctly. Um, and then Avondale Spring Street Saison was my third beer of all time. Um, I still think it's a fantastic beer. I'd love to revisit that beer. Um, it was kind of a fruity Saison, if I remember, or a farmhouse ale Saison uh, thing. I had it fresh from a crowler. My buddy brought it up, thinking that was the beer I, I, crave, or I raved about. Um, and it wasn't the beer. He got it wrong. But in fact, uh, it was still a fantastic beer. Uh, Avondale's in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, so if you're in the southeast and, and you're looking for some good beer, Avondale's a good brewery to check out as, as well as Street to Ale and then Yazoo. Um, and then Avondale Strawberry Kolsch, it's in the name Strawberry Kolsch. I had it one time straight off a keg uh, going to a Birmingham Barons game. Uh, some frat guys were just passing out some free beer. Maybe they were some Birmingham Southern fraternity boys or something. I don't know. Uh, but it was it was a beautiful beer, and I I need to make an effort to go down to Avondale and try that strawberry coals fresh off the tap again. I need to relive that experience. Uh, and then my number one all-time beer from 2016 uh, is Sam Adams Cold Snap. So that's it. I, I'm done revisiting the past, so let's talk about uh, the present. A lot of Sam Adams on there. I was a big Sam Adams junkie for sure back then. And that's that's kind of where I came from. Uh, I started, like most people do, with the crappy macro loggers, which I say they're crappy, but they do have their place in the world. I still do appreciate a good cold, ice cold Miller Lite or an ice cold uh, Rolling Rock. Uh, from time to time. So, so macro loggers had their place in the world, but that's where I came from was macro loggers. And then I went into, uh, I felt like I needed to start somewhere. I needed to pick a brewery to start with and really kind of explore that brewery and then then I would branch out maybe maybe I would I would figure my way and Sam Adams you know because of brand recognition because I I thought at the time it was one of the original craft breweries of the modern era that I would just start there and indeed it is not the original but it it was one of the first uh pioneers to come along and uh so yeah, that's why even three years ago, Sam Adams was just heavy on my list. So let's talk about the present. Let's let's fast forward all the way to 2019. So I want to start off with some honorable mentions here. Because I feel like I really branched out this year. I had a lot of different styles. Um, I had a lot of uh, a lot of beers this year. I don't remember my check-ins, but I've I had over 130 something different beers. I think maybe even over 160. I'm not sure. I'd have to check my my uh, year of beer on my Untapped app. But I know I know it was 110 plus at least, and that's a lot of beer for me. I don't know if it was a lot of beer for you, but uh, some honorable mentions, and I want to. I want to put a disclaimer in here before I get started. If for any reason you find an issue with my support of a certain beer or company, uh, and I'm pretty sure you can gather uh, who that may or may not be by me even saying this, uh, just unsubscribe and, and quit following me because I'm not going to put up with that. I think um, I'm not going to get too political here, but I think in today's society, there's just, everybody just wants a quick knee-jerk reaction, and they want, you know, they just want to 
cut the head off of something and, and uh, you know, obliterate it off the face of the earth because of one thing or another. And I think uh, if we sit back and really think about things and reflect and, and come to an educated conclusion, I think we would all consider the collateral damage uh, the innocent people that get affected by uh, behavior on the internet. So that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I have no shame in supporting any of these breweries or drinking any of these beers. I plan on reviewing some in the future. So again, just go on and hit that unsubscribe button or dislike me or, and just go about your merry way because I'm not really worth your time uh, to to comment or I mean I'm just some bum from Alabama just making a YouTube video uh, so yeah in honorable mentions I'm gonna go from the bottom all the way up and the further I get uh, the closer I can get to where these beers probably maybe could have gotten on the list but for one reason or another in my head uh, I didn't put it in the top five so uh, Southern Prohibition Brewing, uh, their Sea Lord beer. It was an Imperial Oat Brown Ale. I was very impressed with it. Uh, and I'll be real, if it didn't have coffee in it, it could have been a perfect beer. It could have been a 5 out of 5 beer. Um, I don't really like brown ales. Uh, and I don't like coffee. So... That was why it was kind of an honorable mention. I, I kind of already knew going into it um, that I probably wasn't going to be crazy about it, but I wanted to, to review the beer anyways. I don't have that review out, so I'm kind of spoiling it, um, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with spoiling my own reviews. I don't feel like everybody that subscribed to me will watch this video. Um, but yeah, it was an Imperial Brown Ale. It was fantastic. It was chocolatey. Uh, the coffee wasn't overbearing, um, and then the marketing really, I just love that can, uh, the, I don't even know what it was, like the angler fish with the hood on, and I think it had a trident, I'm not sure, it was cool marketing though, uh, and then, then it kind of sheened the labeling, um, and then Southern Prohibition Brewing, if you're interested in the beer, uh, they're from Mississippi, I believe. I don't remember the town. It's it might be Hattiesburg. I think it's Hattiesburg, Mississippi. But I'm not too sure on that. Don't quote me. They are from Mississippi though. Um, going up the list, straight to L, Juicy Bunny. Um, I'm gonna kind of ruin some of this list by saying this, but straight to L, Juicy Bunny is probably my favorite hot Ford beer uh, I've ever had to this point in my life. I thought the juice, the, you know, I hate saying it because I just said juice, but like the, the juicy characteristic of it, the fruitiness uh, combined with, with the hop character, uh, the tropical hops and stuff. I do have that video up, so if you want to see that video, uh, as of now it's up. Um, you can go see more depth information on that. Um, Samuel Adams Bavarian Lager, I do not have a video of that. Uh, I actually drank that beer prior to even starting this channel. Uh, but I picked it up for the Super Bowl game day pack that Sam Adams had at Publix. Um, blew me away. I love it. Loved it. Uh, untapped. Uh. Untap labels it as a dark ale. I'm not sure if it really is a dark ale. Considering it's called Bavarian Lager. Uh, but nonetheless, I did enjoy the beer. It was a fantastic beer. And until some of these beers I had later on this year, uh, Bavarian Lager was probably in my top five. Uh, for sure. I really did enjoy it. Um, Lexington Brewing Company's Vanilla Barrel Cream Ale. Probably my favorite cream ale of all time. Now that's kind of cheating uh, with this beer considering the vanilla and the caramel character. Uh, 
it's more of an adjunct in terms of what the cream ale category is supposed to be but with it being a specialty barrel aged beer um, I'm okay with saying it's my favorite cream ale of all time um, and then uh, again this will be the, the trigger warning so if this triggers you I'm sorry um, just click that unsubscribe button but Founders KBS I uh, had it and didn't give it a pleasant review on Untapped. I aged it I was going to age it for a long time, and I, I will admit, I will admit the whole thing with Founders kind of scared me, because I still wanted to enjoy Founders beer, and I almost decided to be a closet Founders drinker, and at the heart of it, that's not who I am as a person. I don't want to be in the closet about something that I feel fine about. Uh, so yeah, Founders KBS, and I had it again in October, I believe, aged for about six months. That coffee really died down. I felt like the, the barrel and the bourbon and the chocolate really came together. The chocolate really uh, came out there after six months, and it's the best stout I've ever had in my life. Um, I really, I really enjoyed KBS. And so here we are. We've made it to the top five. Now again, the stipulations for this list are that I had to literally drink it in 2019, being this is my first official list. Now, I know I rattled off two separate lists already, uh, and so maybe there's going to be a little confusion about this list, but I did literally drink every beer in 2019. I know that's unfair to some of the beers and the honorable mentions. Uh, considering I have some all-time greats that I've been drinking for years on this list. Um, but it's my list. It's my show. And next year, I will have new parameters. Uh, this just being my first list, uh, this will just be the rules. So, number five is the Einstock Icelandic White Ale. And Einstock, if you don't know Einstock already... They're from, I'm going to butcher this, by the way, so get ready. Uh, Akureyri, Akureyri, Akureyri Island. I'm pretty sure that's not even how you pronounce it. I'm pretty sure I didn't even come close. Uh, but it's in the name. It's a white ale or a wit beer or a Belgian wit or a Belgian white ale, whatever you want to call it. Uh, fantastic beer. I've got a buddy. Shout out to Juices Room Q. He's had this beer before. He thinks it's got way too much coriander in it. Um, that may be so. So if you're not a fan of like overpowering coriander, maybe it's not for you. But uh, I personally love the beer. Um, one of my all-time favorite wit beers, without a doubt. Um, number four on the list. Lexington Brewing Company, uh, the Bourbon Barrel Ale. They're from Lexington, Kentucky, obviously. Um, fantastic beer. I had it for the first time ever, probably two years ago. In a, in, uh, if you live in Huntsville, I had it in Drake's. Um, and it was just beautiful off the tap. Uh, all the fruitiness and, and in the barrel and the bourbon. I, th I feel like it's a prototypical bourbon barrel aged beer. It's like the Peyton Manning or the Dan Marino of, of beer, of bourbon barrel beer. If you want a beer where you can taste the beer and the bourbon and the barrel, I mean, you can't go wrong with the brewery who pretty much only barrel ages beer. Uh, and then they're in whiskey company, so they all country, not company, they're in whiskey country. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and so they also make whiskey, I, I believe. I believe they do some distilling as well. Um, but fantastic. That bourbon barrel oil is fantastic. I plan to do a formal review sometime in the future. Um, now, I do have bottle representation for the top three. And... Um, I want to preface the top three by saying all three of these beers are perfect beers in my opinion. 
to me in my preference now would i say anybody else would find these beers perfect maybe maybe not uh, i really don't think uh at least one of these beers is going to be found as perfect by anybody else. In fact, this list may be controversial to some of you. Uh, if you disagree with any of these beers, feel free to thumbs down and, and uh, put your complaints in the comments. I would love to respond to people who disagree with me. Uh, but number three, oh, and uh, before I get started again, I want to preface by saying all three of these beers are perfect and really um i'm only ranking these three in a certain order uh just for the sake of having an order um i think these these three beers are pretty different from each other and i think just depending on the day the mood i'm in any of these beers could be my favorite beer of all time and i really mean that these three beers are amazing beers uh, so number three on the list is Orpheus Rainbow Serpent by Orpheus Brewing. I butchered that, but I think we got through it. I love that can. Uh, some of my favorite marketing on a can right here. Uh, is that rainbow streak in the female's hair and then that, that snake, that boa, or, or it looks like a rattlesnake. Maybe she's holding... Uh, just a wonderful beer. Um, then Orpheus is out of Atlanta, so maybe they're not hard to find. I hope they're not hard to find. I know here in northern Alabama, I find plenty of Orpheus. Um, and it was just fantastic. Now, what they did with Orpheus, they took their Serpent Bite uh, beer. So Serpent Bite is the base beer of Rainbow Serpent. And then they add juicy raspberry, pineapple, lime, and uh, put vanilla in it as well. And um, the Serpent Bite is a dry hop sour ale. So it's like a hop four sour ale in base. And then they added uh, all those fruits and then the vanilla. And I thought that vanilla really set it over the top. Uh, I think the vanilla really is what made it a perfect beer for me. It just made it taste like a fruited pie with a graham cracker crust and i said that in review you can watch the review for more details but i just can't rave enough about this beer number two on the list is saint bernardus abt 12 abbott 12 whatever you want to call it uh it's a belgian quad a beautiful belgian quad out of uh Watau, Watau, Belgium, excuse me, uh, from St. Bernard's Brewery. Um, I love the marketing on this. I love the little monk guy. I love the, uh, it's almost an old English uh, style font on here. Uh, I'm a sucker for beer history and these old Trappist ales and, and that kind of stuff. And I don't think St. Bernard's is one of these traditional breweries. I think they're more of a modern brewery. Uh, I know they have connections with Ho Garden, and they helped resurrect uh, the Wit Beer. Now, the Ho Garden Wit is the original Wit Beer, as far as the modern uh, Wit Beer. Um, it is the oldest, oldest uh, recipe that is currently being brewed, anyways. Um, and so, yeah, St. Bernardus does have connections with beer history, but I don't really know how old the brewery is. Nevertheless, I still love the marketing. I still love old Trappist breweries. I still love anything from Belgium. Belgian beers are just my jam. I will always love Belgian beers. And uh, this, and it, it, it tasted like chocolate covered cherries. It was just a fantastic beer. Uh, a beer I would recommend for a celebration or a special event, or it's because it's 10% alcohol and then it's not very cheap. Um, on top of that, uh, so, so yeah, they're St. Menorah's at 12. And then number one, I'm sure you're going to boo me for this. Cold Snap by Sam Adams. Uh, it's my all-time favorite beer. I've been drinking it for years, and I know that's not fair to a lot of the beers on this list. Um, I 
But before this year, this season, um, they changed the recipe. So I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how they changed the recipe. I did put this in a beer fight with the Einstock White L to compare the, the, uh, the wits to see which one I actually preferred and this one still came out on top of my opinion. Their secret ingredient, they don't put it on the bottle anymore but it used to be plum. Um, and so Cold Snap prior to 2019, uh, 2020 is, has basically been my favorite beer of all time uh, until these two came along and I just, I can't decide anymore. It really just comes down to what I'm preferring on a specific day. If I'm wanting a sour ale, you know, it's hot outside, or I'm just wanting something a little tart, I'm going with this. You know, maybe it's getting a little colder outside. I'm wanting to cuddle up by a fire, or snuggle up on the couch, or, or maybe something special has, has happened that I want to crack open. You know, a nice bottle of 11, 12. Or, you know, it's springtime, and I want to watch playoff hockey with my cold snap. You know, I think the magic of cold snap to me is how sessionable it is. I think it's only, it's 5.3% alcohol, so pretty standard craft beer ABV. Um, and then it's a wit beer on top of that, so it's pretty, it's easy drinking. Um, I feel like I was doing this beer a disservice to not put it on the list, even though it's kind of like... You know, I've been drinking this beer for years, so to put it as my number one of like a specific year, uh, it's kind of redundant in a way. My, I literally drank this beer from like, I would say March to July. I mean, I was buying, I was buying Cold Snap for four or five months, and and I was not great. <laughs> this beer, uh, roughly goes off the shelves around April, April, May-ish. That's when they, Sam Adams starts putting out the summer ale. And I still had a cold snap in my fridge until July. So I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to this beer if I didn't have it on my all time list. So there's my top three. These are my perfect beers of all time. Uh, 2019 was a fantastic year for me. Um, Wow, I just brain farted. Um, so yeah, 2019 was a fantastic year for me. Uh, I really hope to try more beer this year. Um, my goal every year, every time I drink a beer, even not just every year, is to try and find something that can beat this beer. But, you know, and I feel like maybe I did that with these two. I, I really found some gems in Avid 12 and Rainbow Serpent. And you can just see it when I reviewed these two beers, how much I enjoyed uh, Abbott 12 and Rainbow Servant. I, it's one of the things uh, I drink beer for, is that reaction, that enjoyment in beer. And, uh, you know, I think it says a lot about these beers to get that kind of reaction out of me. Especially, uh, this was my first Belgian quad ever, and I enjoyed it. Uh, not because of the hype or the price. Um... And then this, I'm not even a sour fan. I feel like once you've had one sour, uh, you've had them all. And, and this is a sour, and I loved it. I thought it was a perfect five out of a five beer. So um, I'm going to end this this video by saying, um, asking a question. Uh, what are your top five favorite beers of 2019? What is your favorite beer of 2019? Um, and then, what are you looking forward to in 2020? What's your bucket list for 2020? What, what are some beers you hope to, uh, you hope to try in 2020? Uh, until next time, guys.